Oh, you could have been a good girl, but instead you chose a real world. Yeah, you've always been a savage. Oh, you've always been a bad chick. Over a century ago, huge insects suddenly appeared and invaded Japan. It is unknown why they were here, but one thing is for sure, they crave human flesh. Some insects even have the ability to turn normal people into insects called insect men to serve them. As they slowly invaded Japan, they gradually shrank the land that humans could live on. In Edo City, an organization dedicated to exterminating insects, Mushibajio, was established and is operated by a judge known as Princess Na. Her body can produce a powerful poison capable of killing any living being who touches her. Members of the Mushibajio organization include Katori, the leader who assigns missions to the other members, and Hibachi, a female ninja who specializes in explosives. Koikawa is known as the murderer for his tenacity in battle and how he dresses. He once killed 99 people to avenge his mother's death and act like he was okay with killing them. Tenma, who is the defensive specialist, is shown to be a shy little boy, but when danger comes, he will summon his paper dolls to fight. Mugai, who is the bug exterminating specialist, is quiet and secretive. Mugai is shown to be a mysterious swordsman, but sometimes his actions show otherwise. Jinbei, the main character, is a young samurai. He is a carefree, hot-blooded person who is always ready for a fight. When he was younger, Jinbei's father deliberately disabled his own leg in order to take Jinbei's punishment in his place. This is something Jinbei constantly feels guilty over, and thus he decides to become the new member of Mushibajio in order to appease his father and make him proud. When he arrived in Edo, Jinbei sees the luxury of the city for the first time, so he is a bit confused and somehow got lost. Luckily, he is helped by a girl named Oharu. Oharu then showed Jinbei the way to get to the insect magistrate's office. But on the way, Oharu was attacked by a giant spider. Jinbei quickly chases the spider to its lair. Though he did put up a good fight against the initial spider, but there were more spiders hiding inside. With his current level of swordsmanship, he couldn't do anything against the horde of spiders. He would have lost his life if the members of the Mushibajio hadn't arrived in time to rescue him. After the insects were defeated, seeing that Jinbei had potential, he was recruited by the Mushibajio for the position of an intern. After a while, Jinbei trained and practiced fighting alongside his comrades in the organization. Jinbei's sword skills were greatly enhanced. His relationship with his teammates also became stronger as they felt Jinbei was kind, honest, and devoted to his teammates. As for the insect judge, Princess Na, she becomes the target of the assassination of the Insect Hunter Organization, an organization opposed to the Mushibajio. They have been probing the whereabouts of the head of the Mushibajio organization for years. Now they learn that Princess Na going to be alone on a secluded island named Hachijo. The insect hunters immediately set sail to Hachijo Island to find and kill Princess Na. The Mushibajio received information that the insect hunters were on their way to Princess Na's location. So they immediately planned to rescue Princess Na accompanied by the leader of Mushibajio's shrine and temple patrol, Yumehisa. Along the way, they encounter Manako, who is one of the insect hunters. Manako shows off his power by slicing up the massive ship of the Mushibajio. He can even fight on par with Mugai who is considered the strongest in the Mushibajio. The group is informed by Manako that the other insect hunters are on their way to kill the insect judge. Knowing that they don't have much time, Jinbei and Hibachi will continue on to the island first, and the rest will follow them soon after they have dealt with Manako. Although Manako was very strong, he wasn't expecting an entire cannon brigade from Yumihisa to fire at him, causing him to be severely injured. Then Koikawa was the one who finished him off. They continue towards the island by a small boat. In a house on the island, the princess senses that there are intruders on the island, so with just a wave of her ungloved hand, a fog of poison surrounds her area, killing everything around her. However, the insect hunters already knew about this special ability of the princess, so they prepared the antidote in advance. At this time, Hibachi and Jinbei were flying over the island. Out of nowhere, they were attacked by darts. Jinbei falls right through the house where the princess was. While Jinbei is talking to the princess, a hunter appears and rushes to slash her, but his sword is melted by the princess's acid poison. The princess and hunter then jump onto the roof to have more room to fight when two more hunters appear and attack the princess. The princess wanted to fight them on the roof to avoid hurting Jinbei, but he still climbs onto the roof and rushes to protect her. As a result, he was wounded all over his body while fighting them. Even so, the courageous boy still tells the princess to run away, and that he will hold them off before he falls to the ground. 
This courage and selflessness make the princess's heart flutter. Seeing that he was just an innocent boy with a pure heart that had to suffer to protect her, she swears that she'll be the one to protect him from now on. She then transforms into her rage form. All of the hunter's weapons melt when they charge at her. Her power blows away the house and shakes the surroundings. The hunters could only run away from her overwhelming strength, but they still had a secret weapon. Nearby, there was a hunter manning a ballista, aiming a special arrow at the princess. When it was shot at her, it didn't melt like normal weapons. Instead, it broke through her defense and embedded its tip inside her body. This arrow was specially crafted to counter the princess's power. The princess's power gradually dissipated, and the hunters immediately came to capture her. The hunters saw that Jinbei was still alive, and knowing that he was important to the princess, the leader of the hunters was about to put an end to Jinbei's life. When Mugai and the team arrived just in time to rescue the princess and Jinbei, Koikawa and Mugai stay behind to prevent the insect hunters so that Tenma, Hibachi, and Katori can take Na and Jinbei to escape. However, they were stopped by a hunter wielding a huge hammer. He creates a rift that causes them to be separated again. The princess must now carry Jinbei on her back to escape, but Jinbei looks a bit different. Struggled as she might, she couldn't get far until another hunter named Saugen caught up to them. He lunged forward, attempting to stab the princess with his glaive. But then Jinbei, in a feral-looking form, easily and with no remorse kills the hunter. The princess is shocked by the individual in front of her. She calls out to Jinbei, but he doesn't reply and continues to find enemies. However, he doesn't distinguish between enemies and allies. He attacks anyone that he sees. He charges at three of the insect hunters and slams two of them into the ground before being kicked away by the third hunter. But then his long, tied-up hair grows into a monstrous arm that strangles the hunters, slamming them into the ground again. He begins to lose control of his power and attacks everything around him. Princess Na wants to do something to stop Jinbei, but as she was climbing up the side of a cliff, she was discovered by one of the hunters that Jinbei was slamming around, and he intends to kill her right then and there. Suddenly, the princess was regretting that she wasn't going to be able to keep the promise that she made to Jinbei. Jinbei regains consciousness and rescues her. Soon after, he falls asleep from exhaustion. The hunters felt that the situation is unfavorable. They had already suffered several casualties, and the princess's powers had already been sealed away, so they decided to retreat. After the somewhat successful rescue mission, the Mushibajio team returns to Edo together. Having left Edo for a while, when they returned, the entire city was in flames and was being ravaged by insects. Though Ogami, the leader of the Mushibajio Samurai House Patrol, and his samurai stayed behind to defend the city, but many of their samurai were injured, so the team had to immediately continue fighting, despite being very tired. But luckily Jinbei's dad has come to help out, he alone defeated a mountain of insects. The main reason why Jinbei's dad came to Edo is that it's been quite a long while since Jinbei left his home to join the Mushibajio, and Jinbei has learned many things. So to test how much he has grown, Jinbei's dad, Jenjiru, will teach him his ultimate sword technique while on a timer. In the end, Jinbei succeeded in learning the technique and making his father proud. A few days later, insect men attacked the city of Edo, led by a very powerful insect man named Yukimura. He ordered Sasuke, who was a fly insect man, to find Jinbei for some reason. But as he was looking for Jinbei, he got hungry, and so he massacred an entire neighborhood of people. The Mushibajio were alerted about this and quickly got there to see the bloodshed. Yumihisa used his revolver to fire at Sasuke, but it didn't even scratch the insect man. Then Ogami and Yumihisa rushed to attack the insect man even using their newest cannons to fire at Sasuke, but nothing that they threw at him could harm him. Just as Sasuke was about to finish off Yumihisa, Jinbei appeared. After a period of training with his father, Jinbei's swordsmanship greatly increased. He successfully slices Sasuke in half. However, Sasuke has the ability to regenerate. Each part of him that was cut off regenerates into a whole new body. When Jinbei cuts Sasuke into more pieces, more Sasukes will appear. Moments later, other members of the Mushibajio also arrive to assist Jinbei. After a while of fighting, the team realizes that if the fly's heads are cut off, they will no longer be able to regenerate. But at the moment, there are too many of them, so Jinbei musters up his courage to come up with a risky plan. He lures all the flies towards him and puts the technique Fuji Hammer that he had just learned from his dad to good use. He cuts off the heads of every single fly with one swing, finally killing them. After that, some shenanigans happen, until we get to Princess Na, 
who wants to restore her powers by searching for the Eternal Well, located in the east of Kishu, which was being occupied by insect men. Jinbei Anuka, who is a very capable samurai and an intellectual man in Edo, will escort the princess to the Eternal Well. While in Kishu, Yukimura is ordering the people there to build him a large ship equipped with powerful cannons that can easily destroy thousands of ships on its own. After a run-in with a powerful insect man, Jinbei's group arrived in Kishu province and saw that they were on a wanted poster. Kishu is now in a dire situation and has cut off connections with the other provinces. The Mushibajio received information on what was going on and so Mugai and the rest of the team head to Kishu to help out the princess and Jinbei. The plan proceeds as follows. Princess Na and Mugai will go to the Eternal Well to restore her powers, while Team Jinbei will take care of the insect men. After the people of Kishu finished building the ship for the insect men, of course, they didn't keep their promise instead they wanted to feast on the people of this province before setting sail to conquer all of Japan. But as Yukimura ordered his insects to eat, Jinbei's group appears, and they protected the citizens of Kishu. The Mushibajio then challenge Yukimura to a duel, but before they can confront Yukimura, they must overcome his loyal bodyguards known as the Ten Crucifix Insects. To show the Mushibajio what they were messing with, Yukimura demonstrates his overwhelming strength by slicing off a mountain with just a swipe of his hand. Not phased by the opponent, Jinbei's team then slowly split up one by one to fight the members of the Ten Crucifix Insects. Many fights occur. Initially, the members of the Mushibajio were slightly weaker than the Ten Crucifix Insects. But with the will to never give up, each of them awakens new skills and successfully defeats several of the Ten Crucifix Insects. However, there were still two very strong insect men left. Hibachi and Koikawa will confront those two insect men while Jinbei and Uka will head to the last boss, Yukimura. Mugai and Princess Na were on their way to the location of the well along with some guides. But among them was the leader of the Ten Crucifix Insect in disguise. Mugai though already knew about this. So he starts fighting against the leader when he is about to attack the princess. This opponent is formidable, so Mugai had to leave the princess alone with the guides. With no one to protect the princess, Uka ordered Jinbei to go and protect her while he went to confront Yukimura. When Uka faces Yukimura, he uses his strongest techniques against this frightening foe, but his attacks can't even make Yukimura break a sweat. Even when Uka has only one arm left, he is still determined to buy what little time he can so that Jinbei can reach the princess to protect her. With his last breath, he is assured that the princess is safe, and he passes away. After having dealt with Uka, Yukimura then goes to meet Jinbei and Na. Jinbei readies himself to defend Na, but Yukimura mocks Jinbei by saying that the other samurai that he fought was quite entertaining, and he hoped that Jinbei could do the same, which angers Jinbei. Jinbei tells Na to quickly jump into the well, and he will hold off Yukimura. Jinbei uses all of his strongest skills to attack Yukimura, thinking that he has defeated Yukimura, allowing Na to enter the Eternal Well. But of course, Yukimura couldn't be that easily beaten. He rose out of the rubble, not even scratched by Jinbei's combo of attacks. Jinbei still tries to attack the powerful insect man. However, Yukimura has gotten bored, so he intends to kill Jinbei by blasting him away into the well. For context, it is thought the price to pay for restoring Na's powers is that she must overcome her past. This is where Jinbei gets to see the origin of how Na got her powers, and the truth is that she is also an insect man. Na feels ashamed and blames herself for bringing disaster to everyone around her. But Jinbei doesn't judge her. Instead, he cheers for her and believes in her. This gives Na the strength to face her past. She then pushes Jinbei away as she goes down deeper into the well, while Jinbei floats back up to the surface. But when he surfaces, Jinbei hears the bad news from Yukimura. He reveals that he wanted the princess to restore her powers because the real price to pay for doing so was actually her memories. With her memories gone and her powers restored, Yukimura will use her to destroy humanity. Jinbei, upon learning of this, immediately jumps right back into the well to save Na. At this time, Mugai appears after killing the leader of Yukimura's bodyguards and has come to battle Yukimura. A battle takes place between the strongest of mankind and the strongest of insects. After telling Na the truth about the well, Jinbei carries the princess out of the well and flees. Meanwhile, Mugai is still busy fighting Yukimura. Although Mugai's sword pierces Yukimura's body, it seems that he is unharmed. The Lord of Kishu tried to help by burying Yukimura under an avalanche of rocks along with Mugai, but he still couldn't do anything to the insect man. Yukimura continues to chase Princess Na to get her back to the well. Jinbei tries to stop him but is unable to resist Yukimura's overwhelming power. Yukimura captures Jinbei to threaten Princess Na to return to the well.
caring for the safety of the only person that she loves, Princess Na agrees to return to the well. She says a few words to Jinbei before jumping into the well. A tremendous magical power emanates from within the well. But Yukimura is a bit disappointed when Princess Na comes out not in her black butterfly form, but in a white one. At this time, the members of the Mushibajo have fully gathered here to support Jinbei. However, from behind, Princess Na stabs Jinbei, shocking everyone. Although seriously injured, Jinbei still rushes to attack Yukimura, who has absorbed the power of the well and summoned a number of insects. With just a few attacks from Yukimura, Jinbei was knocked out. Everyone uses their strongest skills to attack Yukimura at the same time. But now they can't even touch him, let alone do any damage. Even Mugai's attack could only break through Yukimura's barrier. Yukimura then sends his insects to attack the team. When Mugai was in danger, Jinbei once again turned into his feral form and rescued Mugai. This time, thanks to the support of his teammates, Jinbei was able to keep his consciousness. Princess Na also joins the battle, making it even more difficult to defeat Yukimura. Jinbei volunteers to confront Princess Na while his teammates confront Yukimura. After fighting for a while, Jinbei accepts being poisoned in order to approach Princess Na. He wants to help her recall her memories by showing her his own. Along with the sincere feelings that he has for her, he successfully makes the princess recall her lost memories. So Yukimura's plan to use the power of Princess Na fails, and Yukimura uses his new power to create a storm that slowly destroys Kishu. He then summons a lot of insects from the ground that attack the Mushibajio. The current Mushibajio team is more united than ever. They split up to destroy all of the insects, while Jinbei confronts Yukimura. As the two clashes fiercer and fiercer, the stronger Jinbei becomes, and he will not stop fighting until he eliminates Yukimura. To finally end this, Jinbei uses his strongest techniques along with the one that he learned during the fight with the ten crucifix insects, and with his own newly created one, Jinbei successfully destroys Yukimura. With their final enemy defeated, everything has been resolved. Japan was finally at peace after many events. The Mushibajio returned to Edo and receive a warm welcome from the people.